Hi, my name's James Robbins. I'm a product development manager at Shakespeare and also a member of the Shakespeare Super Team. I brought you down to Arrow Valley Lake in Redditch, which is a very prolific park lake stuffed with carp, bream and roach. I want to take you through one of my favourite methods today, which is ground bait feeder, fishing for mainly bream, roach and perhaps the odd carp as well. I've got some fantastic new products that I want to show you that we're launching in 2010 and I'm also going to take you through some of the rigs, baits and give you some tips related to this style of fishing. This is the new Mac 3 XT feeder rod combined with the 040 size Mac 3 XT reel. I love this rod and reel combination for bream fishing from any range set from say 30 meters up to 60 meters. Another important feature about this setup is the braid mainline. I like braid because of the thin diameter and the lack of stretch which helps aid bite detection and also improve accuracy on casting. One thing I will mention is the need to combine it with a fluorocarbon or mono shot leader. The shot leader obviously helps to allow large medium sized feeders to be cast to such distances without the fear of crack off. It also gives you a little bit of stretch when you're just about to net the fish. If you use braid straight through that can be a recipe for disaster because you'll pull out a fish and crack off just as you're netting the fish. I've got another setup as well that I'm going to try today which utilizes a slightly shorter rod. This is the 11 foot 6 Mac 3 XT combined with a, a 040 size reel, so the same size reel but the fundamental difference is that I'm using a mono or fluorocarbon main line instead of braid straight through. My thinking behind this is if, if I start catching more carp or bigger bream and I don't need to cast a distance, this fluorocarbon main line will give me a little bit more cushion to play the bigger fish without fear of breaking off. So it's going to be interesting to see which is the best method out of the two today. So I'd now like to show you some of the detail relating to the line and braid that I'm going to be using today. This is the six pound trialing sensation that I use as a shot leader on the braid rod. As I mentioned, trialing sensation is a very tough and reliable line and I can really cast very, very good distances without fear of cracking off with this line. The actual diameter is uh, 023 millimeter, which isn't too thick, but really does give you that extra security on the cast. The braid I'm using is three pound fire line. That has a diameter of 010, so that really emphasizes how thin this braid is. And that's the main reason behind the benefit of being able to cast further and more accurately. And then finally, on the short range rod, I'm using four pound trialing fluorocarbon. Now fluorocarbon is a relatively new mono that has only really just started to take hold in match fishing. I'm absolutely sold on fluorocarbon as a main line for ledgering. The main advantage for me is the fact that it's heavier so it sinks very very quickly but it's also very tough and strong. An additional benefit is that it's actually clear so if you're fishing in clear water conditions the fish isn't going to see the line. Then finally on the hook length material I'm using Berkeley XWR in diameter 012 and 014. For bream I'm quite confident using 012 and maybe catching the odd carp but there are some big powerful carp in here and if I started to hook those regularly then I'd step up to the 014. On the longer distance rod I'm using the standard traditional paternoster style setup. So that's a fixed paternoster down to the feeder and a relatively long hook length of say four foot. Now obviously depending on the conditions and the way the fish are feeding I'd change the length of the hook length. So if the fishing was hard or I felt the fish were feeding on the drop I'd increase the length of the tail quite considerably up to maybe six foot. If I was catching fish quickly or missing bites then I'd reduce the hook length maybe down to as much as two foot. This is a really simple setup that very rarely tangles. One interesting feature that I've got in terms of 
setting up the feeder is that I use a loop and push that over the swivel on the feeder. So I can change the swivel very quickly, but there's no bulky snap swivels that can cause tangles and problems when you're casting. <laughs> Down to the hook, and the hooks I'm using today are Camasan B560s in size 14 and size 16. I find these hooks very, very sharp and lightweight. If I was catching more carp, then I would step up to a slightly heavier gauge hook. But I find for all round fishing, these hooks are absolutely fantastic. You don't want a heavy hook. I quite like using big size hooks, and I very rarely now go below a size 18. Even with, say, double maggot. With the hook being lightweight, you still get good bites, but you reduce the chance of the hook and the bait doubling over and the chance of fish pulling out. So over to the other rig, on the shorter distance rod, I'm using quite an interesting rig, which is a sort of bolt rig. And what I do is I use two rubber stops, adjustable rubber stops, and create a bolt effect. And I use a much shorter hook length. My thinking behind this is, sometimes when you've got a lot of fish in the peg and you're getting a lot of line bites, you really want to just sit and wait for a positive bite or for the fish to hook itself. And this rig really works effectively for bream, skimmers, roach, and obviously carp. I'm using a cage feeder in this example because I like a cage feeder because it will allow the bait to come out really quickly. When the, when the fish are feeding and the conditions are good like today, you can really introduce a lot of bait. And a cage feeder will let the bait out easily, very quickly. The last thing you want to be doing is reeling back in with bait still in the feeder because all you'll do is spread your bait over a big area and spread the fish out. Both the Mac 3 XT rods that I'm using today come supplied with three different quiver tips. There's a two ounce, ounce and a half and an ounce tip. A really key feature for me is the fact that all the tips are built off the same blank and to achieve the different test curves are cut back to different lengths. So the shortest tip is the two ounce and the longest tip is the ounce. It means that all the tips bend perfectly into the carrier section without any flat spot at all. Well the sun's come out, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day and I'm going to kick off the session with a large cage feeder and introduce three or four feederfuls packed with casters and see how the session progresses. That feels like a nice bream. One thing I really love about these new Mac 3 XT rods is the progressive action. You can see the rod bending from the tip right through to the middle section with a very smooth curve. You've still got plenty of power in the butt section for taming bigger fish and casting effectively. But they really are a joy to play these bream on this rod when you're using braid. You feel every kick and knock. The other feature to talk about is the reel, the new Mac 3 XT reel. It's tremendously smooth with 10 ball bearings and has a lot of cranking power as well. There we go. That's not bad for first cast. A lovely bream, typical for Arrow Valley Lake, around about one to two pound in weight. It looks like we might have a good day. There you go. What a tremendous net of bream in a short session here at Arrow Valley Lake in Redditch. I hope you've enjoyed watching this short video. I've certainly enjoyed demonstrating these new products to you. If you have any questions relating to the products or this style of fishing, please don't hesitate to contact me via email. Let's get these fish back. Cheers.